Hello, welcome. Welcome to this week's NACWI Power Hour. We are so glad you are here. If you are watching this on replay, put hashtag replay down below so that we can make sure to welcome you and see, chat with you as we go through this process. I am super, super excited about today. I've got a couple of announcements for you first. If you're new here, new around here, just know that we meet every single Tuesday at this time. Our members meet on Zoom to do whatever the day calls for. We have guest speakers. We have, last week we did hot seat coaching. That was really good and really fun. And today we have Karen Limwell Board coming to talk to you about something new we have coming up, which we're super excited about. So let me share my screen with you. Get in the right spot. I know. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Now I'm going to share the screen. Hmm. Here. I'll be fine. And you're just going to see all my tabs, and that's how it is, which works for me. So if you live in one of these cities, we have local networking that happens. I want to mention though, NACWI is primarily an online virtual um, networking space. And so we have a lot of members who don't live anywhere near one of these chapters or one of the chapters that is opening. We just have this added bonus, right? Where if you do live near one of these places, you can attend some local networking. Right now we have East Valley, Dallas, Atlanta, and Tucson. Coming up, we are going to have North a couple in North Carolina, two more Phoenix, two more Arizona chapters, I should say, Phoenix and Maricopa, and then two more Texas chapters, Rockwall and Houston. If becoming a director at NACWI is something that interests you, feel free to reach out to me. I would love to have a chat, let you know what's involved and see when we're starting the next round or the next group. Virtual networking happens each and um, every third to Thursday mm -hmm. of the month at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific. Right now it's 5.30 5 Arizona time. In a few weeks, that will be 4.30 Arizona time, just <laughs> what it is for those of us who live in Arizona. It's always fun. And so Thursday, February 22nd, make sure you join us. Also February 22nd, earlier in the day, I think around 11, we're doing speed networking. So I will get that information out ASAP so you can get registered. It's a free event. It is open to you, your friends, whether they're NACWI members or not. It's just a fun way to get to know each other and to come in, meet some of the NACWI members, see what our community is, right? And then the third Fridays of each month, we have the Wisdom Well. It's our monthly mini mastermind experience. Um, where our members come in to give and receive, right? Both of those things are important. And that's at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, again, on Friday, February 16th. So that's this Friday. Go ahead and register if you would like, and space is limited. Virtual work co-working was last week. We will have it again the first Wednesday in March. And we're going to add a couple more of these, but for right now, that's when it is. Our Voxer Prayer Channel, all the links, anywhere you want to find to go, just go to nacwi.com backslash links. If you don't remember any other thing, remember that one, and I'll take you everywhere else you need to go. So we're going to pray before we get started, and then I'm going to introduce Karen to you guys. Not that she needs any introduction. But if you're new around here, she might, right? Like you've probably read about her, but yeah. So anyway, so Father God, thank you. Thank you for each and every person in the room, Lord. Thank you for those who are going to watch this later on the video as we get it uh, recorded and uploaded and all of those things. So Father, I just ask that you bless each one, that you lead us and guide us. And I just thank you for the precious gift of your son, Lord. As we talk through this week with Valentine's Day tomorrow, people talk about love all over the place. And the reality is that unless they know you, Lord, they don't know love, right? They don't know all the different kinds of love that is so much more than a feeling. So I thank you, Lord, for, the, for your love for us. 
and we just want to express our love to you. Everything we do in our lives is worship, and God, I set apart this time right here as we are getting ready to talk about NACWI and what's coming up. As worship to you, Lord, all of our work is done for you and not for man. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing, and I'm going to introduce to you Karen Lamoiborg. We are super, super excited that you are here. Do you want me to say what's happening next, or do you want to make the... Let's go through the slides, and I'll stop and let you say what it is. Okay. What it is, and all the... I'll do all the things and you do the what it is. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. I'm going to spotlight your screen. There we go. So oh. that we make sure it's recording you. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then you're, yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Yep. All right. I hope you have a little bit of fun today. It was fun for me to put it together. But we're going to talk really about just for the next 30 minutes-ish, how to build for the next, let's, okay, so caveat, for the next really year, we're going to talk to you about how to build confidence as you write all the things that you have to write on your entrepreneurial journey. But today we're going to talk about how you view yourself as a writer, or maybe if you view yourself as a writer. So the my goal today is to help you to embrace the fact that you're writing every working day. I would really like to sh see a show of hands. If you don't write every working day, something, and you can call yourself a writer, a real writer. I want to encourage you to join a NACWI writing community. You're not alone. So Heather showed you, I think, was it on the slides that every first Wednesday of every month, we do an hour and a half. Now, I wish it was like two and a half hours, but we do an hour and a half time of writing together, working together. And obviously during that working time, I would really like to meet somebody who's not writing something down there. Everyone's doing some little bit of writing. And then we want you to join this new venture that we're on. So if you want to talk about NACWI Writing Academy, and then I'll go through some more slides, or do you want me to zoom forward and talk about it in your choice? Sure. Yeah, I'll just say that we are launching NACWI Writing Academy. And so we're going to start off a little slow, making sure we have things in there, but hit the ground running at the same time. So if you're feeling intimidated by writing, it's the perfect place for you. If you just want to make sure you're in community when you're writing, it's the perfect place for you. If you've been writing for years and just want to get a little bit better, it's the perfect place for you, <laughs> right? We are all in different spaces. We all think about ourselves differently when it comes to writing. I've always told Karen, I'm not really a writer. I'm more of a, of a speaker. Mm -hmm. She's right. The reality is I write emails. I write newsletters. I write, I'm writing a book that's almost done, right? Like I'm writing all the time. And so it's only a mindset block that keeps me from saying <laughs> I'm a writer. I am a writer. And so I'm excited about this venture. And as is our past president of NACWI, and this writing piece for her is near and dear to her heart. It's really where she's dove in since relinquishing Macri to me. And so she's ready to come back and serve the community with this gift that God has given her for writing and publishing and knowing all of that process. So I'm super, super excited that you're here with us, Karen, that you're going to be doing this, that you're leading this charge because it is so needed. And so I'm just going to turn it over to you. Okay. You chat. Yeah. <laughs> so we originally talked about, is this a writing chapter? And we decided the format for this is more academy, almost seminary, if you will, and didn't fit the format of chapter. Plus it gives you, I think, a variety of ways to join NACWI and really dive in. And so throughout the year, if you're in, and I, I hope I get this right, and if I don't, you can correct me, but if you're in the National Association of Christian Women Entrepreneurs Facebook group, you're going to get a snippet every week of what we're doing in depth in the NACWI members only group. 
And beyond the NACWI members only group, as the academy grows, there will be some other formats for them to tie into if they need, if and when they need. So we'll over this next year, we're going to cover things, which I didn't even put on here, but one would be what's the kingdom foundation of your writing? And then another would be what's your platform foundation? Of course, in kingdom foundation, we're going to talk about the fact, and you've heard us say it before, that God is the CE of everything you do. He's the chief executive engineer. He's the one we should be going to first. And from his word and through the inspiration of his Holy Spirit should spring forth all that you create or co-create, right? So we'll we'll dwell there some as well. We'll talk about your platform. What are you going to call your writing venture? And of course, it may be a small, I don't think it's small, but it may be a piece of and not the primary piece of your offers your services your programs your products but it is a part of it and what are you going to call that and how do you develop that all out with um handles hashtags all the things do you need a, an assumed name or a db ever going to get down to the brass tack foundations of your platform and then, of course, we're going to dive into the who, what, when, where, how, and why, which sounds really simple, but it's not really simple at all. We're going to talk first, of course, about your why, and then the who, what, when, where, and how. And as you can imagine, the how is going to take up, which as it should, probably a huge 75 to 90 percent of where we dwell so that you've got writing tips every week dropping into you and answers to your questions and things like that. So that's where we're going to start. No surprise to any of you who have known me for more than about 15 seconds. The key verse is Proverbs 3.26 from the New American Standard. It says, for the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being caught. As an ACWI president, I think we planned, Danica and I and some of the other team members, we planned on dwelling here for a year. And I think we ended up dwelling here for 15 to 18 months and then Heather became the president of NACWI and she continued it for a while and still mentions it often. It's become ingrained in our DNA as it should. It's part of who we are and what we do. I carried it even further and you'll see it if you follow me on social media anywhere. You just see it popping up everywhere. I hung out here in this verse and places around it. All of this time, and it has changed me. We've written a book about it. There are probably other books coming forth. It's maybe my life first now. I'm not sure. But we hope that you understand that no matter what you're doing, no matter what God, who has God has called you to be or what he has called you to do, he is your source of confidence. And it starts there. And the, we could do a whole week's worth of study on what it means that your foot won't be caught. But you get the picture. <laughs> And it won't let me go to the next slide. I love the Mother Teresa quote. I love C.S. Lewis quotes about writing. I love it that when writers talk about writing, we want to hear from them. So I even thought, what? My, one of my favorite authors is Jan Karen. She wrote the Mitford series. And I thought, did she ever talk to anybody? She surely did, right? She went and talked to people about writing and what her whole process is and that sort of thing. And I found it's on Amazon and it's a little published piece of a talk that she gave where people were asking her questions about her writing process, right? And it's just absolutely adorable. And I learned so many things. So one year, I can't remember which year, when we had a writing retreat, we do eight sessions in the weekend. You can imagine there were people who've written an entire book in one weekend. I have. And in the devotionals before each of those eight sessions, we just talked about writing tips that Jan Karen put forth on her writing. C.S. Lewis talked about writing and writing about writing a lot. But I love this quote by Mother Teresa from her book, The Joy in Living, A Guide to Daily Living. I am a little pencil in God's hands. He does the thinking. He does the writing. He does everything. And sometimes it's really hard because it's a broken, I wish she had said, I'm a broken but it's a broken pencil and he has to sharpen it a little bit more. I love that. And isn't that the way we should be looking at our writing and our writing journey? 
a little bit from me and you're welcome to stop me at any time if you have things you have questions about or want to talk about. This is what we're going to talk about in the next few minutes. That Habakkuk 2, 2 to 3, if, if you've been around me for very long, you've heard this one as well. Then the Lord answered me. Now from the New American Standard Version, it says record the vision, but most of the other versions say write the vision. So then the Lord answered me and said, record the vision or write the vision and inscribe it on tablets that the one who reads it may run. For the vision is yet for the appointed time. It hastens toward the goal and, and it will not fail. Though it tarries, wait for it will certainly come. It will not delay. What greater, I'm going to say reward, could there be than that something you have written has caused someone to run? Read it and run and do what God has called them to do and be who God has called them to be. What a blessing that is. So you've already heard Heather and I both say it. You're never not writing. You're always writing. I would say on every working day, I really am still wanting to meet an entrepreneur who could say to me that on a working day, she wrote nothing. You're writing things. I love the double negatives. You're never not writing. You might consider yourself primarily like me, a wife. A nana, we have two little babies asleep in the house right now. A minister, a speaker, you may not consider yourself primarily a writer. If someone says, what are you or what do you do? That may not be the first thing that rolls off your tongue. But to do what you've been called to do, there's surely some writing. So even if it's a love letter, a response to a school teacher, a ministry plan, a speech, Heather's a speaker, and all the other texts and emails and all the things, social media posts we could list. I'm going to make a list of a hundred things you write as a Christian woman entrepreneur. Oh. You can help me. I'll give you credit. All the things you write need that they have to be written to enhance your business and ministry to get the word out there to shout from the rooftop. So as you do what you're called to do by the Lord and you do because you're here, you are an instrument in the Redeemer's hands. I borrowed that as a title of a book by Ted. No, Ted Tripp writes Things like shepherding a child's heart. Paul Tripp writes to entrepreneurs, an instrument, you are an instrument in the Redeemer's hand, a must read. And as you write, as the Lord has called you to, you're a pencil in the hands of a writing God. I think I need to post that right there in front of my office so that I'm reminded as I put my pen to paper, my fingers on the keyboard, I am an instrument in the Redeemer's hands. He's the writing God and I am his tool. That sounds funny. One of my daughter-in-laws calls herself a, tool, herself a tool. And I know what she means by that. She doesn't mean the pencil. But anyway, so we're going to talk about the fact that you're never not writing. You are a real writer, that writing is your calling. Even if it's a sub calling, primarily I'm a speaker. And to do that, I must write. It's transforming. We know that. It's cathartic. We know that if we're journalers, and it's your obedient service to the Lord. And then we're going to talk about, just have some fun with some writing tips that you're going to get a sneak peek at over the next month. So let's talk about the calling and all the things. If you want, if you love Christian comedians, Google or go to Facebook. And I don't know, you'll either find Sean Dietrich and his name is spelled D. Diet Rich. I never remember how to spell Dietrich, but D I E T R I C H. And Sean is S E A N Nikki, if you can put that in the chat room. He's a writer. This man publishes a blog every single day and has for I don't know how many years. I just find that incredible. I'm just too picky. I have to go and cross every T and dot every and refine and send it to Callie and say, Nikki, does this make any sense? And it's just all the things. One of my all the things is perfectionism and going over the top on things. So he writes, he's hilarious. He's a musician, a speaker, a stand-up comedian, a very fine Christian man, hilarious. Man. So I'm going to read you something that he wrote. I thought he's a writer that I admire. Has he ever written anything about writing? So I Googled. John, I went to his website and typed in, does Sean ever talk about writing? <laughs> The process of writing. This is what he said, and I love it, so I'm going to read it to you. It's, he's so funny. He said, if you would have told me 10 years ago I'd be receiving letters from people who wanted to be writers, I would have laughed and asked you to refill my oval team. But the truth is, I receive message about this very thing from aspiring writers all the time. 
Nearly without fail, most of them actually use the word aspire in their letters. Here are some excerpts. I'm an aspiring writer. Please help me figure out how to go about this. Or I'm an aspiring author. I'm 18. I'd like to know what my next step should be. Or I'm 71 years old. I aspire to be a writer. Do you have any tips? I wanted to depart from my usual subject matter and take a moment to address these letters because I know from my own pitiful experience that there is nothing more frustrating than wanting to be something but not knowing how, which leads to my first point. And this is the main thing I will tell the good people who have contacted me. This is my charge to you to quit calling yourself an aspiring writer. You're not an aspiring writer. You're a real writer. Simply put, if you write, you are already the real deal. I truly believe this. After all, you don't aspire to be alive, do you? Nobody living in New York aspires to be a New Yorker. Birches don't aspire to be trees. Episcopalians don't aspire to be Episcopalians. They simply open a Paps blue ribbon and shout, and also with you. Episcopalians are fun. Skill has nothing to do with who you are. Who you are is who you are. And if you like writing stuff, you are a writer, not an aspiring one, a true writer. Now you say it. See how easy that was? You're legit now. Identity crisis solved. Now you can go on with your life. And I would even say, even if you don't always like writing stuff, <laughs> you're still a writer. I agree with him. You're a writer. And sometimes you've I love that you said, Heather, it's intimidating because even for someone who, like Jane Karen, has published a series of 13 books and they've caused a firestorm of interest and I'm sure millions of dollars or whatever, there are times when she's intimidated by the writing process before her, set before her. I would assume as Susan talks to us and teaches us about different cultures, and their foods, there's some hesitation there. I got to get this right. I don't want to misrepresent Ethiopian culture and Ethiopian food. There's always going to be a little bit of intimidating blockedness when we are writing, no matter what we are writing about. Uh, can you imagine the intimidation of a ghost writer who writes for someone with trying to write with their voice, it just, it can become, that's why your VA, Nikki, will text me and say, is this what you're thinking? When I created this post for you, this is what you said, but here it is, is this what you're thinking? Heather, are you jumping in? I am. Yeah, it's so funny, the like thing that you were saying earlier, and then this, because I have a friend who's a ghostwriter and he teaches people to be ghostwriters. And he tells them every single time he runs a class, he's okay, I'm going to tell you the one thing you have to do to become a ghostwriter. It's like the most important thing you're going to do. And then he's like, w. Oh, tell somebody you're a ghostwriter. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. write something down. <laughs> down. Like, yeah, you just go tell somebody you're a ghostwriter. It's the hardest thing we do. And it's the easiest, right? Because it's, it's all here. But yeah, it was so good. And it's so when you were saying all of that, it just reminded me of that. We So we wrote the book together. Some of you in this room were in it. At least four of us so far are in it. And so we wrote the book, Cultivating Confidence from the Lord, right? And one of our writers, years later, just recently said to me, actually, I wrote down my story, but it was so hard for me to write it because I don't write like that. I don't write in chapter format or and she said, I actually hired a ghostwriter. It ends up we all knew who she was, who the ghostwriter was. But that young woman could hear this story and ask a few questions and write in her voice that I would have never known. And I've known her for years. That wasn't what she actually wrote down. She needed help to write it down. There's no harm with that. I actually think we should write like a crazy person and then hand it to somebody who can refine it and fix it and that sort of thing. I have three of those. Somebody's two of them are in this room. Actually, Heather, I've done that to you before, too. Let's see. I don't want to take up a hope. Let's talk just really quickly about what it means that writing is your calling. It's transforming. It's cathartic. And it's obedient service. And then let's go quickly into and have some fun with some tips. We talked about the fact that God has called you to be someone for him, for the kingdom. And he has called you to do something or some things 
for the kingdom and writing happens to be one of those things like mother Teresa, you're a little pencil in the hand of a writing God, or like Ted Tripp said, you're an instrument in the redeemer's hands. It's part of your service and your service. And the way you serve him is his command. You write from a place of obedience. And we'll talk about that in just a minute as well. And you know how transforming writing can be. If you have ever written, writ, read something someone has written and it has changed you, it's transforming. And you know that you have written something you may not know. We may get to heaven and someone walk up to us and say, guess what? Something that you wrote really caused me to obey the Lord and finally listen to what the Lord was having me say. It's transforming and life-changing. At a writing retreat we had, I think it was two years ago, a woman I had never met walked into the home that we rented with my wellness book and said, held it up and shook it in my face and said, you need to know that I read this book and one other book that kind of go that talks about the same thing, being well in all dimensions of your life, body, soul, and spirit, not just physically well. And it changed my life. And in fact, it is the foundation of my new platform. And it's so great for me to watch over the years, her platform grow uh, way deeper into that subject than I could or want to dive. And in, in such a unique way, according to her giftedness, the way that God has gifted her, it's just metamorphosizing, if that's a word, uh, and writers don't know all the words, right? It's transforming and it may start with a few, what we think when we first write it down, are jumbled brain dump ideas. And then the Lord takes them to new places. I used to read Alice. Have you ever read Alice in Bible Land? An adorable series of children's books. I used to read those books to my children. They have them memorized, even to this day, they're in their 30s. And it's all about Alice, patterned after Alice in Wonderland. And Alice, as she sits and reads, receives a little note from an airmail bird flies in he hands her the note and she is transformed from that point into bible land into a time in the bible and gets to watch firsthand what it was like for esther to become queen right there's 25 of them i think they're just adorable sing songy right rhyme i'm not a poet but it's beautiful and the little note that the bird hands to Alice says, same thing, every book and my children, I would just, they, it would say the little airmail, airmail bird shows up and hands her the note that says, and my kids would all scream out, writing is the magic, reading, sorry, <laughs> reading is the magic key to take you where you want to be. In other words, without this reading, she could not have been transported to this magical place and done this. Now I just think I just added something to our presentation, writing. In addition to reading can be a magic key that takes you and takes your reader where she wants to be. Uh, I love that my kids have that all memorized, memorized, memorized. It leads to transformation because it provides a way for you to work through your feelings. So it's a very cathartic, and we know that. Those of us who are journalers know without a shadow of a doubt that magical, majestic things happen when you put your heart on paper like that when you've journaled when we write in these writing these eight writing sessions sometimes four times a year sometimes one year we did seven I was I was in hog heaven had a glorious time I will always encourage writers during our sessions to write a little bit at least with pen and paper put your pen to paper. And I'm not a writer who writes that way. I very rarely, I'll buy journals and they just sit there. I very rarely write on paper. I actually type a lot of things. I walk and dictate. I'm such a habitual dictator. It's almost needs to be a disorder in the diagnostic and statistical manual for counselors. I dictate so much that I often have called someone. So in a prayer in our set writing session on Monday morning, I let, bowed my head and said, oh Lord, thank you that we've all been able to come together this morning, period. <laughs> or I called Lou, one of our former NACWI members and, and left a message. Hey Lou, comma, I know it's your birthday. And I just wanted to say 
happy birthday from me and from all the kids and all the family exclamation mark new line I wanted to also tell you I'm it's an illness I'm sure it is maybe they should name it after me <laughs> the Karen syndrome or whatever the one time think of a time when you did journal and it changed your heart it changed your life so a personal testimony which those of you who know me know this story my young husband of 11 years died in of cancer and the children were seven six and four his illness lasted about four years the last 111 days were in hospital and then of course it takes years it's been it was 30 years in September of 2023 so it's, we're on our 31st year and there's still grief to bear right not the same as those first two years when you thought you couldn't remember how to breathe anymore and that sort of thing I journaled uh, voraciously during those years and we sold our farm not long ago a year ago of 23 years and we haven't cleaned it out yet there's a development company that has taken it over and they want someone to stay there until they break ground so that the property is protected and people aren't vandalizing and that sort of thing I don't know why they care if people are vandalizing because they're going to raise our house to the ground I'm sure but anyway we're there. My children, one of my children and his family, they're there. But I still have things to go through. I don't know if I'll ever get it done. Maybe she just set a torch. But I know that journal is there somewhere because I'm not a hoarder, but I don't throw things like that away. I wouldn't on purpose. And I'm just praying that the Lord will reveal where it is to me as I go through all of this. I would love to read from this vantage point the way that God met me and comforted me because I carry that journal with me everywhere. I wrote in it. I learned so much more than I felt the presence of the Lord as well, more than I ever did before, or maybe even ever have since. I felt it physically, soulfully, and spiritually. And that's one of the cathartic things that journaling can do for us. And physically, I've said before, I felt it. It was as if I was physically touched wrapped in a blanket, snug and warm all the time for a couple of years. My new husband married me wrapped in the Holy Spirit's blanket. I'm not the person that he married. If he wanted me to be like that forever, I don't know if he got what he wanted, but it was a blessed time, um, one I will never forget. So then writing is your obedient service. So we talked about obedience. Let's talk about obedience. If you've been with me for more than five minutes, you have all her, also heard me say, and I didn't make this up. Tasha Glover of Brand with Grace says, "Your are, she was walking her children. Some of them were in strollers at the time. And she thought she heard an audible voice say, your R-O is more important to me than your R-O-I. And she thought, I don't even know what that means. But as it developed, she understood that what the Lord was saying to her, to us, is your return on obedience is more important than your return on investment. Do I think that God cares about the money we make as writers or as Christian women entrepreneurs? Absolutely, I do. It's the way you can further serve, right, and give more and develop more. But he's more concerned that you are obedient to be who he has called you to be and to do what he has called you to do. And as you're obedient within this calling, it takes writing all the things to share what the Lord has called you to be, who the Lord has called you to be and what he's called you to do. Uh, you've got it like that the person that said, go tell someone that you're a ghostwriter. If Susan didn't reach out to us and say, we're going to talk about different cultures and their glorious foods come and join me on this venture we wouldn't have joined her on the venture if Danica didn't say you you're hurting you need freedom let's talk about that let me walk you through the process through operation freedom suite we wouldn't say yes we wouldn't have even know what to ask for the list goes on and on for NACWI and what NACWI has to offer us as well. And the Lord says that if we love him, we will obey him. And we're reminded to obey him, not your coach and your sibling and your whatever, your most adored client, et cetera. So in this new season, this is why we're here. And we're launching a NACWI Writing Academy for you, for, for members, 
we're asking you to be obedient to the Lord in all that he's called you to be and to do. And as you reach out to others in the kingdom as well, through specifically through your writing. So let's talk, have some fun with some writing tips. You ready? Actually, you know what, before, write, type in the chat room. And those of you who are watching the replay, sorry, we couldn't get it to come up for you live. Type in the comments, what are three writing tips from you to you? From you to you, from you to the person sitting next to you, from you to me. Take a minute. And we might even take a moment to ask you to shout one out. <clears throat> so start shouting. Anybody, Heather, what would you say? One of my writing tips would be join us in the NACWI Writing Academy. You don't have to do anything but show up in the NACWI members only group for now. Later, we're going to ask you to jump through some hoops, but for right now, it's just show up and do some writing. Somebody else. Synergy. Writing together propels you forward, period. It's not like you're always together every five seconds, but it's just the no. praying together and moving and then go right and then come back. Yeah. Don't waste your pain. Write about it. Oh my goodness. You're so right. From that pain, we are transformed and changed, right? Answer your clients' questions. FAQs. Oh my goodness. And we should all be having FAQs. Sometimes you just have to sit. You're right, Sherry. Sit in your little tushy in the seat and do some writing. I had a today a client who's in our writing, another writing group say, I know him as a very successful multi-level marketer. I hope he would be okay with me saying that. But he said to me, he sent me, he tried to call me and I didn't answer and he sent me some voice messages and sent me some texts and everything. And his original, he was saying to me, I'm trying to write, but it's just not working. And my original degrees in college were English lit and composition. I had no idea. And so we had a homeschool pastor. This is one of my advices. We had a homeschool pastor years ago who people were talking about how much time he spent in the word it was his career. He had a little more time than we did when we were working 40 hours a week or whatever, and they were saying to him, it's just so hard to dive into the word and to really spend a significant amount of time there. And he said, what is a significant amount of time? It's different for everybody and for every season. But could you, we were in a group at one time of 15,000 homeschoolers. And he said, could you, would you stand up if you felt like you could give the Lord an hour of study in his word a day? And uh, people were honest. Not many people stood up an hour. Like I have three children to raise. I work a 48 hour week. I've got to do the house. I've got to do all the things. Right. And he kept going down. What about 45 minutes? What about 30 minutes? Started getting some people standing up. What about 15? What about 10? What about five? And by that time, you can imagine most people were and if they weren't if they were still sitting down they were being seriously honest most people were standing up who could not spend five minutes in the word every day i would say i said that to him what would happen if you added it added up if you spent just don't put pressure on yourself what if you just spent 15 minutes a day writing it doesn't matter what you're writing just write something write what the lord lays on your heart 15 minutes and i didn't do the math i'm hoping he did the math i should have done it for you but 15 minutes five working days a month so 15 times 20 times another month before long you've written for hours and you probably have finished something everybody yeah i can do 15 i can do it on the day so i don't know about you so let's talk about a writing tool and let's do writing tips do you guys play around with 750 words.com so it's now they've changed oh my goodness they changed so many things but now if you go to new dot seven five zero words.com you're in their new platform which has lots more bells and whistles and I love it. In fact, I could show you really quickly. Let me stop share. I'll just show you what mine looks like. Here's what it looks like with me writing. And then when you go to the stats, I don't want to go to let's write. I want to go to the stats. 
you go to the stats for the day, the statistics for the day, and they do all the work for you. So let me see if I can. Ah. I'm not sure this. we're seeing your screen. Oops. Is anybody you're, else? You're not seeing it? Oh, I haven't. Maybe I haven't found it. Hold on. <laughs> there we go. Okay, let me show. They will give you how many words you wrote, when did you start, how long did it take you. Here's some badges. You get the egg badge. You get the albatross bag badge. I don't know how many badges there are. I never look at those. I'm not a badge girl. But I wrote about NACWI Writing Academy inside 750. No one can see your writing, as far as I know. It tells you what you're feeling mostly, love, what you're thinking about mostly, spirituality. You wrote in an extroverted fashion about positive things you were very certain instead of uncertain you were thinking instead of feeling. I just love it. And then it gives you, I wish they would actually make, my suggestion to them was make the word cloud. Don't just tell me what words were in the word cloud, make it. And then I can just copy it and use it in a blog post or whatever. I can use it in that blog post about the NACWI Writing Academy or whatever. But then they, and then they show you your writing and you have full access to your writing at all times. So. Cute as a button, right? It's free for 30 days and then they charge you $5 a month. But I love playing around in there. Um, so let's go back to our tips, tools. We did tools. We're going to talk about tips. All right. And then we're going to turn it over to Heather. First tip, you're a real writer. Say it out loud. I'm a real writer. Strive for obedience, maybe instead of for success or even numbers that instead of, did I write 750 words today? When you do, confetti blows all over the place and they do some bells and whistles for you, do a little dance for you. So strive for success. So success and or obedience rather than success or fame. And success is Mother Teresa, in my opinion. It doesn't matter how many words she wrote, she changed lives the Lord used her in mighty ways. Fame is what? Who? Kim Kardashian or somebody who was playing football the other day or whatever. Grab some tools. Sean Dietrich in his thing you're about writing said, grab a typewriter. Get a Step one, get a typewriter. And I'm going to say you already have writing tools and apps that you don't even use, right? Just adopt one of those, resurrect it. 750 words was the thing I'd been playing with for years, but I'm doing it. And if you don't write one day and it just kills you, that little green square is blank. If you write double 750 words the next day, they'll give you the little green square. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm going to write more today so I can get my square green childish things, but fun. So step one, he said, get a typewriter. Then he said, now stare at your typewriter unmoving for 14 hours until you're filled with self-loathing and insecurity because you can't think of a single sentence to write. Perfect. Step two, cry bitterly about your own unproductivity so that snot leaks onto your shirt. You're doing great. <laughs> just get in there. In other words, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just get in there and do it. His What he titled that was Embrace Writer's Block. It's okay. Plow through it, even with snot on your shirt. Find a writing friend. That was one of Danica's suggestions. You've got writing friends all over the place in NACWI. Add writer to your description. Put writing, I'm going to say, put writing on your calendar and put it, I'm like, put it that way, quote, unquote, writing. I have time blocked off when I write with you and I have time blocked off when I write just for with me. And it doesn't say, yeah, it probably does. It just says Karen's writing or Karen's writing. And then it says NACWI writing first Wednesday of every month, or it says whatever. Understand that you don't, there's nothing you need. You don't like anything to get started. You've got everything at your disposal. And then challenge, embark on one of the greatest adventures of your lifetime and share it with us. Join, if you're not a member of NACWI, if you're watching the replay of this and you're not a member of NACWI, Go to NACWI.com, click the button, get started, see what happens, and join us in there. I don't know what your call to action, Heather, would be, so I'll, I'll pod this slide and you can change it up. But I wanted you to know where you could find me. I wanted you to know where you could find Heather, which you already know. 
And I wanted you to know where you could find NACWI members, so NACWI.com. And then this is the free group. Oh, look, can't spell. This is the free group link. I hope I did the right thing. So Heather, jump in. I appreciate y'all being with me. I'm very excited about what is, is getting ready to happen. It's unfolding before your very eyes. It's as if you are charter members. And so we'll be wanting to hear from you more than you probably realize. If you have something to offer you, reach out to Heather and I. We will feature you. We'll get it going. It's going. It's going to go. Yes, it's going. And yeah, I would say if you're not an ACWI member, join. You're going to get, if you're not an ACWI member and you're in the big National Association of Christian Women Entrepreneurs group, which is a big free group that nobody, somebody, in fact, somebody the other day asked me, why is this group public? And then here's the reality, because it's a marketing tool, right? It's because I want people to find us there. And I want to make connections there. But if you want a private group, we have one of those. <laughs> it is the NACWI members only group. And it's just a paid group. And there's so many things that come with NACWI that I always say, I don't ever want people to feel overwhelmed. And I know it can have it because it has so much. And now we're adding a writing academy. And in a couple months, we're going to be creating a speaking program. There's some things coming. But the pricing for NACWI is such that if all you do is come on Tuesdays, it's worth it. If all you do is go to the virtual net or to the virtual networking event, it's worth it. If all you do is go to the in-person networking event, it's worth it, right? So if you just do one thing, it's worth it, but you get all the things. <laughs> and so that's our intention with it. And we would love, love, love to have you join us. And this writing academy is so exciting coming up as we move forward in it. If you're a member of NACWI, really the whole community, we'll get an email about it later today, I'm working on the newsletter email. And yeah, join us and you'll get little bits in the big free group. If that's where you need to be right now, that's where you need to be right now. If you want to go a little deeper, come on in, join NACWI. We're going to go a little bit of deeper every single time. And yeah, I'm just super excited for it. And so you'll be getting more information in your emails, more information on posts, all the ways we communicate. We're going to try to overshare. <laughs> we love to overshare. Love to overshare. I would <laughs> love to pray for us as writers. And I will also add to what Heather said. It, I like that. If you did, if you chose one venue within NACWI and hung out there, you still got more than your money's worth. We once, this was years ago, I don't know now, I made one of my virtual assistants count just the things that were in the classroom, and there were over 1,000 offerings in the classroom alone. So that doesn't even count all the other things. The It doesn't count the blogs. It doesn't count. So it's, we're in our 13th year. Is this 13? Yeah, where it's turning 14. 13. 14. Yeah. 14. And as you can imagine, the way that Heather has it growing, it'll be, we'll double that. We don't even know what the number is. There's no way to know what the number is really. So dive in and take advantage of a piece of it. Choose your niche. So let me pray for us. Thank you. Father God, I'm so grateful. Really, NACWI changed my life, I think, back in 2012. And here we are in 2024. And so grateful for Diane, for Heather, for all those in this room, for all those who have over the years added value to this platform because it changed me. Um, it helped me draw closer to you, Lord. It helped me to understand that uh, your calling on my life is more important than all the other things. It helped me to hone in and focus. It helped me to write. I had just become a writer and wasn't going to ever write again. And so I'm grateful for this group of women and all that you do through Heather and her team and through the members of NACWI. And I just pray for us as we sit down, whether we want to call ourselves primarily a writer or primarily a speaker or primarily a marketer or whatever you've called us to do. As we do sit down to write to make that happen, that you are 
the force behind the pen in our hands, the source of our confidence. May we write, remembering that I am a pencil or an instrument in the Redeemer's hands or a pencil in the hands of a writing God. That's going to be a mantra that I think needs to be posted on the wall just to keep reminding me, Lord, that with you at the helm, there is not anything we cannot do for you. If that's where we have called, according to your purpose, give us confidence, Lord, and strength to put pen to paper as we should every working day. And we ask these things in Jesus Christ, holy name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. So glad that you guys were all here with us.